Another mistake. The customers will come. Right? So you can imagine what would an entrepreneur say? You know, the customers are going to come. What's the entrepreneur thinking? Any ideas? Yeah? Right, well, they're saying, as, as Sergey was saying, our product is so good that people are going to just be compelled to buy it. They're going to want it so much. Right? We're convinced about that. And by the way, all of these slides will be available to you afterwards. Yep? Yep. So, if you want them, you'll be able to get them. Or, we know that, our, that customers want our product because I spoke to a couple of my friends. Or I asked my mother. Yeah? Now, believe me, I've heard this. <laughs> I have heard this. Or, I did a survey. Well, who was the survey? Well, I asked all the people in the building. Yeah. Or I asked all the people in my soccer club. Well, you know, that doesn't really do it. That's not good enough. Validating, validating your product or service with your potential customers is so, so important. I'm sure everybody in iStarter is doing that constantly. Because yeah? it's fundamental. But it is so surprising how often it is not done. I think it's even worse nowadays with this social media because everybody thinks that, okay, we have social media, so the product is going to sell by itself because the social media word of mouth is going to solve the problem. Because the first problem is even more, it's even worse nowadays than it was like 10 years ago when social media pressure was not that strong. Yeah, so there are, it's now easier to make this mistake. I think that's what Sergio is saying. You've now got a little, it's a bit easier to make those assumptions, right? Yeah. So how do we avoid this mistake? Well, I think it's, it's what I said is pretty obvious, right? I say get out of the building. Get out of the building and speak to your potential customers often. So if you're thinking of a potential startup, a new product or a service, and I don't know if it might be online, it might be offline, it might be retail, my suggestion is, Right from the start, start talking to people who could be your customers. And don't stop. Don't stop talking to those people. Understand them so deeply. And as I say, I say to my, my colleagues, I say you've got to, in that sense, get out of the building. You can't do this sitting, I'm, I'm sorry, you can't do this sitting at a computer. At least not completely. Not completely. This is also true for large companies. It's so interesting how often large companies release products that the market doesn't want. And they've got even less excuse. And do not, as thank you. you read, customer service, you read my mind. Don't assume that your customers will change their behavior to a, buy your product or service. I saw this very, very directly in the, in the dot-com era when, I, when we were investing in startups during the dot-com. And, you know, you remember back then, everybody said, oh, the Internet is so fantastic. It makes life so easy, right? Everybody's going to want to do this because it solves, it makes it so easy for them. And we now know it took, five, took almost 10 years for the Internet to become widely adopted by every, of average users. And smartphones helped a lot. So don't assume, it's very interesting, even a small change of behavior can be a big challenge for a customer. You think about your own buying habits. Think about the things you do, the think about the things you buy, you know. That brand of uh, coffee, or you know, that particular cafe that you like to go to, or, and think how hard it is to change. What it takes to get you to change what you buy and what you do, right? That's the challenge. Don't underestimate that one. And then don't ignore your customer feedback. If you, there's some great stories about people who were building products for customers, and then the customer said, no, no, I want to do this instead. 
And then the person said, no, no, this is my product. You have to do it this way. And they said, no, the customer says, no, I want to do it that way. Listen to the customer feedback. And, and be happy. Be happy and pleased when they tell you things you don't expect or things you don't want to hear. Because if, if customers are telling things you don't expect or things you don't like to hear, you're probably learning something valuable. So be, be open for that and listen for that.